Hello YouTube. So I got to thinking, what's better than a super quick and cheap and easy project um, to solve that frustration I feel because Nintendo has canceled the NES Classic Edition and hey, what the heck, I'll build my own, only I'll make a better one. <laughs> I'm going to jump on the YouTube bandwagon along with like the 4,000 other nerds like me who have already done this, but I'll show you my way and hopefully it'll be fun. The SD card um, build has been done by about 20 million other people and they've probably captured a lot better than I can. I'll just summarize by saying that I downloaded Raspberry, uh, I'm sorry, RetroPie, uh, the image for the RetroPie software from retropie.org.uk. And once I had that downloaded and then decompressed because I think it was in a .rar file, um, I burned it to that SD card using some software, some free software. It was called Win32 Disk Imager. And it made it super easy for me to, uh, to burn the needed software onto, uh, I happen to have an eight gigabyte uh, micro SD card here. Um, some people are going all out and putting much bigger. I'm not gonna go nuts and put a lot of the animations into the uh, menu screen of RetroPie. So I think eight gigabytes will be like complete overkill in itself, but it's, it's just what I had. Um, let's quickly go over the price of uh, each item here in case you want to build one too. Um, and you could probably shop around and get some better deals than I got, but I got this cartridge. I think I might have paid $2.99 for it. Maybe it was $1.99. Um, it seems that a lot of these sports games, and especially one by LJN, they're just not that desirable. Please, please, please don't use something like Super Mario 3 to build one of these carts, because you could sell that cartridge um, for a probably enough to buy the rest of all this crap on this table. But anyways, um, the Raspberry Pi Zero, um, I got the uh, non-Wi-Fi version for $5 at my uh, local micro center. Um, this is an HDMI uh, male to female, and the male side is a mini HDMI, and the female side is standard HDMI. That was about six bucks on Amazon. I'll leave the part descriptions and links to where you can get this stuff in my uh, description below. Uh, for the power uh, input for the Raspberry Pi, this is a um, USB male to female adapter. I think what's that micro USB? Uh, let's, does it say it on the uh, card? Well, you guys will figure it out if you're going to do one of these. Again, look at my description. Uh, that was also about $6. I bought a bag of five of these mini uh, or micro USB to USB converters. And I think the bag of five was $4.50. And also $4.50 was this Amazon Basics USB hub. And finally, uh, an SD card. I want to say you can get one of these for less than $10. So let's, uh, let's get started. And actually, um, real quick, before I start uh, hot gluing and using adhesive tape and or epoxy to make all this stuff um, sit nicely inside that NES cartridge, I'm just gonna try and be smart for once and plug everything up and just make sure this thing works before I start um, going any further. So I'm gonna just plug up the device, the wires into the Pi, plug it into my TV, into a power supply and just make sure it boots. All right, and here it is all plugged in. So let's plug it in and see if it works. Oops, there it goes. Man, how can it be that easy? <laughs> All right, first things first, let's take this uh, $4 Wonder USB hub and a screwdriver and 
hopefully I'll just remove the plastic casing and not one of my digits. All right. Well, you know, uh, in the nature of being totally open, if I do remove one of my fingers, I'm committed to finishing this build on YouTube without the finger that I removed. But I'm not going to remove a finger. No worries, because I know you're worried about that. Uh, let's see. Okay. Well, rest assured, after much fiddling, here you go. Now, I'm debating. I've seen some dudes uh, do this with this very device. They just take some pliers and remove the LED. Um, I have a desoldering station, but uh, you know what? Let's do this uh, the cheap way. I'll remove it, and uh, let's see. I'll even use the wrong tool. How's that? I hear you don't have to be too careful about this. Famous last words, right? Okay, one less LED. All right, and uh, let me fast forward to the next part. Here we are uh, inside the cartridge. This is the label side, and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a knife and I'm gonna trace on this inside edge on both sides because you need to remove this ridge here. And uh, I'll do that and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. See ya. All right. And that's what it looks like. Surprisingly easy. If you uh, are going to do one of these and you're worried about this step, you really shouldn't. You can see I just used a, uh, a pocket knife. Um, I didn't even use an X-Acto blade. And I traced with, uh, I'd say, about medium um, pressure on uh, the bottom of both sides maybe three or four times and then I just use some uh, some pliers to grab it and a little bit at a time um, wiggled back and forth and you could see it was snapping nice and even and it left a pretty clean uh, break that's not visible it's it's not blocking any access and it's not visible from the other side so uh, on to the next part All right so two things every time I use five minute epoxy I remember how much I hate the smell that's the first thing second thing is um, just using some wax paper on top of a throwaway envelope here uh, to mix up the epoxy and uh, for the stir sticks those are the pieces of plastic that I tore out of the cartridge and then a q-tip dipped in alcohol is great for cleanup and now you can see I've got a couple of clips that are holding uh, the cables in place while they dry and some hot glue to reinforce this part of the cable where um, with the standard uh, plastic housing that the uh, USB hub ships and it holds that real nice and uh, secure, but without the housing, you need to reinforce it, I think, just to make sure that it won't overstress those wires. Um, and I'll let that the epoxy dry. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll practice routing the wires um, and then wherever the Raspberry Pi will fit um, with the wires um, in the best orientation is where I'll finally mount the Raspberry Pi with uh, with some uh, double-sided foam uh, tape. So if worse comes to worse, if somebody wants to uh, reuse the Pi, they won't have to remove any hot glue from it. Um, okay, I'll let this dry and I'll see you in a few minutes. All right, so the five minute epoxy has set and I use some, uh, some hot glue to spot weld it, so to speak, uh, while it was drying, and I used clamps as well. And you can see uh, I used hot glue to kind of spot weld the wires in place. So um, when I'm done, um, well, th now that it's time to put the lid on, I don't have to uh, become like a lion tamer to try and like push all the cords in and then quickly shut it and slam it shut and hope it works. It should be good to go. Just making sure that wire is not touching the SD card and it's not. Okay. 
um, pretty cool. Make sure the screw points are free. And then uh, note the three uh, latches on the cartridge need to align. And uh, then I'll put the screws in. But uh, yeah, man. That's it. And whoops, I used John Elway and not the LJN. That'll be uh, I'm building two. I'm going to give one away to a friend. Uh, that's it. Now I'll load this puppy up with some games and uh, and have some fun. So uh, that was a quick cheap build. And uh, if you like this, give me a thumbs up. Let me know. Um, hey, I want to see more stuff like this, and I'll make it. Anyways, that's it for now. I'll talk to you all later. Thanks for watching. Bye.